Welcome back to Driven Trucking. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to become a truck driver. And the first tip that I have for you, well, it's probably gonna shock you. So, stick around. Now the first place that most people start is how to get your CDL, but I'm actually gonna back it up before that. Uh, before you get your CDL, the first thing that I'm gonna recommend that you do is take a self audit. And what I mean by that is look at yourself. You know, you need to look at your finances and you need to look at your personality. And this is this is something that is extremely, extremely important. Both, both of those two things. Uh, you know, you don't want to put yourself, you know, if you're coming from some other career or if, if you're young and this is the first career that you're looking at, you don't want to run out and build up a bunch of expenses where you have to make, you know, a certain amount of money every single month. Now we all have, you know, we all have cell phone bills and we all have, you know, small bills here and there that, that we have to pay, you know, but if you have, you know, high mortgage and you have four cars and you have five children, well, you know, beginning a new career, especially in, in trucking, well, that might not be for you. Uh, you know, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you are forced to work all the time because you're going to get miserable. Uh, you know, some of, there are some truck drivers out here that they can be out here for 11 months and, and it not phase them whatsoever, but those are few and far between. I mean, you know, looking at those same lines every day and dealing with being cut off all the time and, and being told that you're number one all the time, you know, it, it, it can wear on you. So, you know, don't put yourself in a position where you're forced to uh, because of your finances. And, and then the other one, you know, really look at your personality. Uh, figure out, are you an introvert or an extrovert? You know, an extrovert needs to be around people. That's how they recharge themselves. That's how they feel good about themselves. You know, introverts, they actually need that solitude. You know, having that solitude uh, actually recharges them. Uh, you know, believe it or not, I'm actually actually an introvert. I know it doesn't look like it, it may not appear like it, and uh, probably not even in, in some so social situations, but you know, for me, I actually need, I need my alone time. I, I need to recharge that way. And that's because I know myself. I've, I've come to learn myself. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit older, you can see the gray in the beard, but you know, it, it's something that you, you can do. Uh, there are tests online, but it's something I highly encourage you to do a little bit of research in, and uh, it's gonna let you know if truck driving is even for you. It, it may not be it may not be worth your time to go to truck driving school and then go through all the training and, and deal with, you know, someone else living with them in, in an eight by eight for, you know, six weeks or so. Uh, you know, you can save yourself a lot of stress if this job is not the right fit for you. Uh, but for, you know, people like me, well, you know, we can, uh, you know, we, we, we truck and we love it. So, you know, it, it's, it's something that most people don't tell you to start there, but I highly, highly encourage you to actually start there. The second thing that you need to do is you need to, you need to understand, can you afford to get, obtain your CDL on your own? That's going to be your best option. Now, is it going to, you know, mean that you're going to get a much better job? Well, no, not necessarily. What it actually does is it doesn't tie you into having to work for a certain company for the duration of whatever that contract is, typically one year, uh, if that company provides you your CDL. So look at your finances and see, is this something that I can afford? Can I afford to not either not make as much money or, or not make any money, but go to truck driving school that's not paid and you actually come out of pocket for your CDL yourself? Like I said before, if you do obtain your CDL yourself, you're still looking at entry-level companies. And, and the reason, just real quick, is because of insurance. I mean, that's just what it boils down to. Uh, it, 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 the insurance cost for you know a company that has five to 10 trucks, something like that, it's astronomical for them to have someone on their insurance that you know that that, that doesn't have any experience. It just it, it it almost doubles the amount of insurance. And when you're talking about doubling the amount of insurance, 
once again, does it sound like a lot, but when dealing with new truck drivers, new truck driver problems, you know, they're generally gonna drive slower. They're not gonna be able to make as many deliveries. Ultimately, bottom line, they're gonna make less money for you. And in the end, you know, at, at a small company, if they're costing you a lot of money, well, that's just gonna jack up the CSA and uh, it's not gonna be profitable for you to actually drive for them. So that's why we call them mega carriers. You know, they, uh, they, they're, they're thousand plus trucking companies. That's just a random, that's, an, that's, a, that's not an exact number. That's just a, a, a rough estimate. But they, they, they have multiple thousands of trucks and drivers, and that's how they can afford that insurance cost uh, for you to go and drive for them and a lot of them own schools and they even get a kickback from the government if they provide you that CDL and that's kind of why uh, they, they get a kickback at the end of that year uh, if you remain with them that's why they put you in a contract and say you know what drive for us for this amount of time and uh, you know the government's gonna take care of you because believe it or not without trucks out here our nation would stop so, you know, if you're using it at home, if it's food, if it's clothing, if it's retail, a truck brought it to you. So if you're not a truck driver, please, I encourage you to remember that. But I highly recommend if you can get your CDL on your own, do that. If you can't afford it, there's no shame in it. I couldn't afford it. So I had to go to a company. I had to sign up for a year and I put in my time. And then at that point, once you get that year, that, you, that one year is kind of like that golden benchmark. From that one year mark, you almost have the ability to go anywhere you want. You almost have the ability to buy, buy your own truck and go anywhere you want. Uh, the, you know, the insurance is gonna be a little bit less, but uh, I don't necessarily recommend that just quite yet, but uh, we may get to that later in the video, so stick around. Once you've made the decision, yes, I can get my own CDL, or yes, I need to go through you know, someone to get that, then you need to start looking at trucking, trucking companies. And you know, if you've got a family, or you know that you're kind of extroverted, you know that you relish your home time, and you don't wanna be out here six weeks, eight weeks at a time, then you need to look at trucking companies that are local to your house or you know where you live or where you reside or the, the closest major metropolitan area to where you are. Uh, you need to make sure that they have some kind of uh, some kind of yard. That way you can you're you know that you're gonna be through the house. If you know you live in Kentucky and you're hiring out out of Washington, well it's gonna be difficult for you to get for you to get home. I mean, that's just the bottom line, that's common sense. So, you know, don't look at those companies unless, you know, that's something that you look at, you've done your self-evaluation and you're okay with, you know, being out here on the road, getting that experience and uh, making a little bit more cheddar than the next person, I guess. But you're going to be much, much happier if you look at these companies and you go with someone that has a terminal that's close to you. And also when you're talking to yeah, these recruiters, ask them, you know, ask them how many accounts do they have that are close, you know, to this house or, or this home or how many loads come in and out of this terminal and you know as you talk to the different companies you're gonna find that you know well this person said 20 loads this person said a hundred loads geez these guys over here said a thousand loads so you know that's gonna give you a nice barometer uh, as far as making that decision what trucking company is right for you something you have to understand is a, a trucking company that's right for you know a friend of yours that lives one state over well they might not be the best bet for you somebody that lives across the city and is, is hired onto a trucking company, they might not be the best bet for you. So don't rely on someone else to say, oh, this is a great trucking company, you should go check them out. Take that with a grain of salt and do your own research. Highly, highly recommend that you do your own research and, and look into you know, the, the pay, of course, and the amount of home time, and then also you know, the, uh, the terminal that's respective to your house. I'd like to take a brief moment to let you know uh, that this hat is now on sale. I think most of you have actually seen that live feed. You've seen that they've gone on sale. Uh, just really quick, some details. Uh, this hat is the first edition Driven Trucking hat, and I'm only gonna offer it this one time. I feel like, every, you know, those of you that are here, you know, with me kind of from the beginning, I feel like you guys should have something special. So this hat will never be produced again after this batch of hats 
goes out. Uh, this is the middle towards kind of the end of November. Uh, they, they should go out probably sometime in January. Uh, although once I do reach a certain number, which I'm sorry, I'm not gonna let you know, but uh, once I reach that number, uh, I'm no longer gonna take uh, any more orders. So if you're interested, you can email me right here, uh, Driven Trucking Hats, and that is hats with an S, at yahoo.com. Let me know that you're interested. Uh, I am going to limit the purchase to no more than two uh, because I just don't want that many out there to be perfectly honest with you. So uh, my apologies, but uh, that's the stipulations. Uh, the hat, if you live in the contiguous 48 uh, United States, then it's $25. Uh, if you're outside of that, then it's gonna be $30 uh, for you. And I do take that payment by PayPal. So just shoot me an email over there. Let me know that you're interested. So once you've narrowed it down to a few companies that you feel comfortable with uh, that are around you, well, at that point, then start asking about pay. And just because they're giving you a higher number on, you know, most of them are gonna be a cent per mile type of deal, just because they have a higher number there does not necessarily mean that you're gonna make the most money there. You have to ask them and, this is one of those things, just be careful, but ask them how many miles are the average beginner truck drivers making, the rookies, how many are they getting? Because, you know, you're, it's a huge learning curve out here. You know, it takes a long time. It even takes, you have to build up your stamina in order to be able to, you know, work a full day. Uh, it's just one of those things, you know, some people do come straight out of the gate. They're able to drive all day long, not get tired, be able to deal with the road. Uh, other people, it, it, it's, it's kind of a learning process or, you know, you got to work it out just like a muscle. So, you know, ask them what's the average and then I encourage you to ask them for people that you can call. Now, this is another thing. Take what they take, take what they say with another grain of salt because those are their people. Those are their, you know, those are their favorites. So, you know, you just kind of kind of got to take what, you know, just think about what it is that they say and uh, evaluate what's going to be the best situation for you. And once you have all of that information, then I mean, the last thing I, I mean, I just recommend, you know, go with uh, go with who pays the most. And if you're thinking about whether you want to do a uh, dry van or refrigerated freight or refer for short or open deck, which is flatbed or step deck, then I'm going to post this video right here. I go over the kind of the pros and cons uh, of the three different types of major trucking. Those will be the only ones that are pretty much pretty much the only ones that are, are options to you as far as beginner truck drivers. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe, ring the notification bell, do all the things, check out the videos over here. Man, we say a lot, don't we? But hey, I appreciate each and every one of you. But as always, stay driven.